Hi, it's uh, Saturday, May 22nd, 2021. I'm out at the Sierra Anches in Arizona, about to go up Parker Creek Trail. Uh, this is just gonna be a quick overnight trip. I'm gonna head up uh, Parker Creek and then connect up with the Rim Trail and kind of contour the east side of the Sierra Anches. And I'm not really sure exactly what the plan is. This is kind of a play it by ear type of trip. So um, I'm carrying all my water on this trip. So it really doesn't matter where I camp tonight. Uh, yeah, we're gonna hike in uh, ways, probably about 10 miles. So yeah, let's go. Last time I was out here, I was just covered uh, head to toe in cuts. Uh, it's gonna get kind of wild. Hopefully the trail's been a little bit more maintained than last time, but uh, I come out here with the lowest expectations always. So you can see here that there's kind of a check dam in Parker Creek and uh, there's not a whole lot of water in there at the moment. Wouldn't be surprised if all the water sources on this trip were pretty dry. kind of a, a lot of dead trees out here and it's very windy so wherever I camp tonight I'll probably need to be kind of careful about widow makers. Hey the trail is in way better condition than I thought it was gonna be so making pretty good time here. Wow, so this was definitely something I had to walk over last time, which uh, that was kind of sketchy last time. So whoever cleared this trail with chainsaws, I am uh, indebted to you. What a spectacular view. Still a few parts that are overgrown and bushwhacky, but so far it's not been too bad. All right, that's the trail that I've been walking up. It's starting to get pretty high up. It's actually kind of chilly up here. When I started out, it was all hot out. But yeah, this is the uh, mountain range that I've been kind of following across from the last few miles. I think we are getting kind of close to the top now.
there's a series of switchbacks that I'm heading up now. So um, I think we're gonna be about 6,500 feet, maybe somewhere closer to 7,000 feet as we get up to this sort of fall summit up ahead. Another view looking back where I came from. It's kind of this mountain on its own. But uh, this is the direction we're actually heading up. The trail is to the right of this shot. Can't really see it. So I know it's kind of hard to see with all the haze and pollution from Phoenix, but uh, there's a mountain range way out in the background there, and that's the Four Peaks, which is the southern end of the Mezzazal mountain range, and then below it is Roosevelt Lake. basically on top so it's kind of this flat section up here the trail is still going up just a tiny bit all right so up here on top I'm gonna kind of walk this sort of flat trail for a little ways on this kind of a, a wide ridge line and then uh, we're gonna drop down to connect up with the rim trail and uh, I don't know how far I'm gonna go maybe uh, somewhere between four to seven more miles uh, before I find a place to camp for tonight Somewhere on that hillside out there is where we're going to be walking and hit the rim trail. Okay, we have our first look at the basin holding Cherry Creek. This is kind of the interior of the Sierra Anchas. And um, the way the camera is pointed now, kind of behind where this tree in the foreground is, there is a trail that we're going to be following out there can't really make it out from here but uh, this is the way we're going and further out there uh, kind of uh, obscured by these trees is Aztec Peak Oh, wouldn't you know it, there's actual signage out here at a couple of trails. Okay, so Parker Creek continues up this way. This one is Rim Trail 139. That's what we're gonna follow. I got half a mind to uh, do a loop on this little overnight. Um, I might take some side trails to get up to the top of Aztec Peak up here 
and then I'm gonna take that Parker Creek Trail back down kind of the way I came. Pretty cool looking campsite over here. It's pretty big. Looks like this trail is barely holding it together. Alright, this is starting to remind me a lot of the Arizona Highline Trail along the Mogollon Rim. And uh, fun fact, we're only about uh, maybe 30 miles from there. Okay, we got some scenic stuff finally, after a long time of just kind of going through dense undergrowth and forest. We'll finally see what rim this rim trail is named after, which is pretty cool. Walked off trail for a sec just to check out the scenery. We've got some precipitous chasms down there. Man, some of these canyons are just super deep. I can't see the bottom, not even a little bit. Check out that view. Walking through some flat rim country now and it's easy walking, lots of Good camping opportunities up here. Uh, those rock features were really, really cool. Uh, I think we're going to see more of those soon. But for now, it's just flat and kind of forested up here. A lot of dead trees. But uh, yeah, it's about 5:30, uh, so I think I'm going to hike at least another hour to hour and a half before I start looking seriously for a campsite. One thing I can say about this place for certain is uh, the walking is slow. Um, I think I'm only about six or seven miles in and I've been hiking for like um, probably about five hours. So that gives you an idea of how slow you move out here. And that's because you can see what I'm walking through right now. Um, a lot of this brush is pretty sharp. And uh, here, take a look at this. So I'm kind of in this dense brush and uh, you kind of have to figure out where the trail goes. 
Um, I think this is it right here. See, so yeah, the trail can be found, and at times there are these huge cairns. Uh, but then just as soon as you think it's going to be easy walking, um, it turns into this dense brush. And this is kind of how it's been all day. Um, in fact, this is some of the densest brush I've walked through. And in fact, if it keeps up, um, I might just turn around and find a campsite. Because uh, this is supposed to be a short, easy overnighter. So we'll see how far I get from here. See what we got here. It's turning into serious, serious bushwhacking now. Wow. It's very much a route finding kind of mission. The cairns are nice, but uh, they're almost useless. Whew, okay. So, Guess I'm bailing out on that loop plan. I'm gonna go back the way I came. I ended up bushwhacking through all of that through there. Very, very dense brush. So basically the last cairn I saw was this one and I kept going that way and I kept going and going and I kept losing the trail uh, and then it got really densely bushwhacked. So I was like, eh, it's starting to kind of get close to evening time. So I don't want to be bushwhacking through the night. So I'm gonna head back up and uh, find some flat areas to camp in and set up and we'll just do this as an out and back. Surprisingly cold out here for the third week of May. I think uh, this is gonna be home for the night. Um, I think I'm about uh, 6,800 feet elevation. Um, I think we started around, I want to say, 4,500, maybe 5,000, somewhere in that range. So, yeah, we climbed up a good amount. Uh, yeah, time to set up. All right, camp set up and uh, it's time to make dinner. Let's see what we got here. Oh. Huh. Cuban coconut beans and rice. Rice, okay, I guess I can't read. Cuban, Cuban coconut rice and black beans. That's how the, those words go together. Uh, this is a 840 calorie bag. Uh, this is one of my favorites. All right. Just so like we do two cups of water in the pan. There's a packet here of uh, olive oil we're going to put in that. And, uh, ah, your trusty oxygen absorber. it is so dang cold I decided to try this it's the food bag and it's in my pot koozie kind of <laughs> it's probably doing something this is not the first time I've ever had to bail from a trip but you don't really see that very often on my videos uh, so I've done it once or twice before but it happens so it probably happens about once or twice a year I end up just having to completely bail from a trip plan uh, the good thing is this is just a quick overnighter and and the reason for that bailing is just because it was taking too long for me to find the trail it's just just gonna be like a an all day all evening event just getting through all that uh, deep uh, brush and stuff seems like what happened is um, somebody came through like a trail crew came through with saws maybe a year ago or year and a half ago probably right after the last time I was out here and then since then they probably haven't done any work on it so nature is already overtaking some of it but, yep okay I'm heading back to the car I'm just going out the same way I came in just out and back 
uh, yeah, so this trip didn't exactly go as planned, but uh, it's okay. Uh, this sort of thing happens. It's, uh, it's not like I couldn't have found the way if I really tried, but um, there comes a point where I go, do I feel like bushwhacking today? Do I feel like serious bushwhacking today? And oftentimes on a short trip like this, the answer is no. So yeah, I'm just gonna walk back down to the car now. Kind of another shot of the interior of the Sierranches in this canyon. I believe this feeds down into Coon Creek. Here's another view of that check dam, and from this angle you can see there's a gauging station over here. Not a ton of water coming out of Parker Creek right now. You can actually see the little solar panel across there that powers it. And it's kind of funny because you see these kind of century agave plants next to it. I'm back in my car and that about does it for this short trip. Uh, it doesn't always work out like you plan, but that's totally okay. Uh, at least it was just a short trip, not a long one that I had to bail out from. Uh, I think in total, I think one way, um, I went probably seven or eight miles, I wanna say. Um, and to put it in perspective, uh, to get to the top and then to get out to where I camped last night, I think it took me probably five and a half hours just to hit that uh, seven mile mark. Uh, so it was very slow going. Um, I got back to the car in record time. I think I got back in like under three hours, so. Uh, but yeah, um, I still had a good time. Uh, that camp spot that I found was pretty cool and there were some neat sights to see along the way. So uh, it'll probably be a while before I come back out here though. Uh, so anyway, um, that about does it for this trip. Uh, like if you like, subscribe for more. See you next time.